Hey guys, Deb here. In this video, I want to talk about the idea of making changes, wholesale life changes, as we go through what I call the messy middle, this sort of midlife crisis, midlife transition, whatever you might want to call it. I'm a firm believer that we don't have to stay stuck with what we've got and we can make changes uh, to our life to make our life feel better for us and I think the the problem is often that people are stuck they feel like they don't have any control they feel like they don't have any choices and that can that can leave them with a genuine belief that there are external factors that are stopping them from being able to achieve or have the things that they want and I'm not talking about airy fairy vision board dreaming big uh, although I do believe in that to an extent I'm talking about just not feeling stuck with the the existence that you have right now so the two things that I think come up all of the time are time and money I could do more if I had more time or I could do the things I want to do if I had more money. And both of these things are out to an extent external to us. They're, I guess, being blunt about it, they're excuses because they're both, they're both commodities that we get to have some control over. We have control over how much money we need to live and we also have control over how we spend our time and you know I, I get that in midlife we have often things that are responsibilities that we have a duty to you know if, if we've got relatives that need our time and attention then of course, I'm not saying that we have to abandon the people we love or abandon our responsibilities. If we've got grown up children uh, or teenagers that are still reliant on us, then of course we have a responsibility to them. But I think it's, it, it's a trap that we can fall into to think that those external factors are what are really at play when in actual fact, it's what we've got going on inside our head, our mindset that makes the difference. And I don't want to be all sort of Pollyanna optimistic around life changes because they do take thought, they take planning, they take some really um, deep decision making. But I think often we feel like we can't make changes because of these external factors. So instead, I guess, of, uh, of using the line, I can't because, or it's easy for such and such because they have more money, they have more time, they have more skills, they're younger, they're older, or whatever the, 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 the stories we're telling ourselves. We need to switch the question around from, uh, or, or the, the statement around from I can't do whatever it is you want to do instead to how can I? How can I work fewer hours without losing the house if you've got a mortgage? Well, you know, there, there might be some tough decisions to be made there, but it, it might be actually, okay, do we need a house this big? Or is there a way that we can downsize and release some money that will give us a bit of flexibility in what we want to do or, you know, and, and I'm not make, I'm not saying it, these, these decisions are easy by any means. I think it's just the, the realization that when we start to think more broadly and open our mind up to the what ifs and the possibilities and the, the how can I's rather than our, the, the I can'ts. Actually, that you know, I don't want to go all woo woo in here, but I genuinely believe that the the opportunities and the solutions start to show when we stop putting restrictions on ourselves by saying, 
I can't do this because, or um, it's, it's all right for them or it's easy for them because. When we start to turn that around and think, how, how can I make this work? But we have to, first of all, start, I guess, uh, even a step before that with what is it that isn't working and what would I want instead? Because if you don't know what you want instead, then it's going to be very hard to ask for it. Um, so it is about, it really is about doing some deep work internally. Journaling is my go-to. Um, I'm not rigid about how I journal. It's very ad hoc. Sometimes I journal a certain way, other times I journal a different way. Sometimes it's just dumping out what's in my head onto, onto paper and getting it out there. Because when it's all stuck in here, it keeps us stuck. It keeps us stuck. And, and that I genuinely think once we've either vocalized what we want or we've transferred it out of our head and onto paper, there's something magical happens in terms of opening up our mind to the possibilities. But all of the time that we're saying we can't do something because we're, we're keeping all of those opportunities locked down and they're not opening up to us. So... Yeah, I wasn't planning on making this video. Uh, it's unscripted. I haven't really even thought about, you know, I haven't even put a framework of what I wanted to talk about. It was just a comment that was, was put onto a video of mine recently, got me thinking about, you know, the only limitation without sounding cliche about this, but the only limitations we have really are the ones that we put on ourselves. And for the majority of us, we have choice. The vast majority of us have choice, even if it doesn't feel like we do. But sometimes we do have to make some really radical, tough decisions. But there's always a choice, even if, even if the choice is hard, but there's always a choice. It might not be an easy choice. You might have to take a choice that is really, really challenging to get you where you want to be. Or actually, once you start to think about it, you might realize that there are so many opportunities you hadn't even thought about, that the choice is really easy to make. The decision is very easy to make. But we do have to, I think, take the time to open our mind up to, I guess, the, the things that might seem impossible. What if we... What if we turned it around and said, how can this be possible? How can I make this possible? Or how can I make steps towards making it possible? Because, you know, things don't always happen overnight. But how, what can we do? How can we shift our mindset out of can't and into how can? That, that is the, I guess that's the ultimate message here. It's not Pollyanna optimism. It's, it's genuinely thinking in a more positive way around the the problem and what the options are to 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 make changes i actually i've, I've just created something in the last day or two which is a, like a guide to journaling because i think journaling for me has been the route to so many moments of clarity to so many good decisions that i've made to so many opportunities to explore different ways of doing things. I just, journaling is so powerful and I'm, I'm very aware that if you don't journal, it, it might seem a bit um, intimidating or a little bit mysterious or, that is, so I think when I first started journaling, I first found out about journaling, there seemed to be so many rules and <laughs> like rules and regulations around it. But actually, there are no rules with journaling. You, you kind of find your own way. But I put together a, a guide that I, I want to kind of give you, if you're interested, as a gift. And it, it's, it looks at the different styles of journaling and the different ways of journaling and the benefits of journaling. And 
Also, it's packed with sort of journal prompts. So if you are stuck in an area and you're not sure how to get out of it, there are prompts in there to get the, the, the brain working so you can start to write your thoughts down. And you'd be amazed how many insights and aha moments and breakthroughs you can have on your own with a book and a pen. If you want that, I'll stick a link to the download in the description. You just need to stick your email address in there and I'll email it straight to you. If you're sitting there thinking, I don't, I don't agree with what this woman's talking about. It's easy for her to say, or she doesn't have my constraints. Maybe you're thinking, you know, um, your, your life is different. And it will be because all our lives are different. But if you're thinking what I'm saying is wrong, um, that's, that's fine. Everybody, of course, is entitled to their own opinion. But I would invite you to question why you think I'm wrong. And if potentially that, that very statement of this, you know, she's wrong, my life is different might not be a limiting factor in itself and maybe that's a journal prompt that you can use why do i think my life is different and why do i think i can't get unstuck i don't know i hope that was helpful i will talk to you soon take care